now we've seen how bows work in real life, let's go ahead and make some toy ones that we can play with. So what we're going to be doing in this activity is we are going to be building little homemade toy bows. Now, important thing before we start, just because they are toy bows doesn't mean to say that they can't hurt someone. The archery is a very safe sport as long as we're sensible about it. We're dealing with sharp pointy things so you don't point let alone fire or shoot any sharp pointy things at anyone else or any animal or pet or anything other than a target right so we're all going to be sensible about this and the only direction that we are going to point our bows and shoot our arrows is towards a target okay so that being said We'll go over some of the things that we learned about <coughs> how a bow works. Now this uh, is what's called a hybrid, but it's uh, you don't need to know any of that. The important thing is that a bow consists of a handle or a riser and limbs on either side of it. Uh, and the way a bow works is that when you pull the string back, it bends the limbs and stores what's known as elastic energy inside the limbs. Elastic energy is energy that's stored in bent things that want to spring back into shape. So hence things like elastic bands and stuff like that. And it's the same, this is called a takedown bow because it can be unbolted and pulled apart. And this is a long bow, but it works in the same way. You have a handle, when you pull the string, these bend and they store elastic energy. And when you release the string with an arrow in it, one thing you never do is to release a bow without an arrow in it, then all of that elastic energy, as the limbs come springing back into, where, into shape, that elastic energy is transmitted to the arrow and the arrow takes that on board as kinetic energy. Kinetic energy means moving energy or energy that uh, energy of moving objects so that that means the arrow is then moves because the elastic energy has been transferred to it gives it kinetic energy and that moves it off towards the target uh, reason why you should never let go of a bowstring without an arrow there is if you've got all the elastic energy that you stored by bending the bow back and then you let go of the string then all of that elastic energy goes straight back into the bow and the bow doesn't like it and all right, that's our little talk and we're going to be making three bows two long bows that are going to resemble toy versions of this and one crossbow and the crossbow can get a little bit snappy so before we start we're going to i'm going to teach you a couple of knots that you may or may not know um, they're very useful for archery and for making bows. So first one is going to be the bowline. So bowline is used for making standing loops. That's loops that don't slip. So the easiest way to do this is to fold that over like a book, make a standing little turn there. It's important that that one that goes up there, the long thread, so this is your working end and that's the standing end so the standing end it goes underneath the loop you can see that there and then your working end goes up like a bunny through the hole around the back of the standing end and then comes then comes back down through the loop it's a little bit fiddly to do these knots with uh, with thin string but that's uh, the way it is with these little toy bows. Okay, so that forms a bow then, and it's a standing loop. And what we do with that is we'll hook that over. Once we've built our bows, we'll hook that over one end. So <coughs> the other knot we need to do is a timber hitch, or in the case of the context that we're using it in, an archer's knot. So normally with a, a timber hitch is that we come over the strings. So we've gone around the back of the pole there and back over our string there. 
So it's kind of ca caught it there. You can see that. And then we'll loop it round again. So we've got a twist, a twist going on there and we can loop it round a third time. We can actually loop it round as many times as you like, but um, you only really need a few turns. All right, so, so what we've got is the, the string comes around, around, over itself, and then comes back round with a few twists. And we can pull that tight. The good thing about this knot is that it's tight, you know, that's that's not going to fall off that way. Um, so, and what it's used for in archery is if we've got the we've got the loop at the top that we've made with the bone in, and then it comes down to the the bottom. And what we don't want is that the the bowstring going off at an angle or uh, or anything like that. We also need it's a good idea to sort of keep a bit of, um, of bowstring floating around for adjustment. So what we can do with the archer's knot is to bring it all in so that the loop on our standing end, the loop is, is grasped. It's grasped tightly and as it goes up through the bow it's still centered down the middle of the shaft. So good idea practice those few knots and, uh, and we'll get to them put notches into the uh, into the ends of our bows <coughs> just to to make sure that they're all stay where they're going and then a little bit of tape on top just for safety so there you go bowling and timber hitch or archers knot and if I show you quickly the longbow it's not quite the timber hitch but you can see it's a standing loop you can see that's a standing loop and it's been twisted into itself there but it gives us a, a, a fixed loop at the top and then at the other end we have there is our timber hitch or our um, archer's knot so the bowstring comes down comes around comes back on itself twists itself around and then ends off in this uh, bit of a loose loose um, bowstring at the end to, if we ever need to adjust the um, adjust the bow so we've got there's our timber hitch on one end and there's our standing loop at the other but we're going to be using a bow in for that okay so for our first bow we're going to be using four lolly sticks um, two of those are going to form our handle or riser and the other two are going to be our limbs. Now it's not going to make a particularly strong bow, but we'll, we'll go for it anyway. So the first thing we need to do, these set those aside for our riser. What we'll do is we'll cut some notches in the top with a uh, craft knife. Remember, safety, ask an adult if you need to. Make sure that there's an adult there to help you with these things. We're going to be using a lot of cutting tools and so on, so make sure you are doing these things safely. But what we need to do is to cut notches into the top of there that will hold our string safe. So, Right, just being really, really careful with these. And we don't need these to be really deep because we're going to be using this thin string so it just has to be enough to keep that in place. So same on the other side. Remember when you're using sharp knives, either get an adult to do it for you or make sure that you are being helped and supervised and are doing it safely. Never cut towards yourself. So we need to do that for another one. You can see 
So what we've done, we just cut some notches in the top of that. And we're going to do the same here. So these will be our limbs for our bow. Now you can actually do this later when all the bow is assembled, but that means that you'll be cutting these limb notches in. <coughs> Uh, once the bow is all glued up to the uh, to the rhizome, it's a little bit more awkward. So it's a good idea just to make sure that these are all cut ready, and your limbs are all prepared before you uh, get them onto your riser. Okay, so there are two limbs. Don't have to be particularly neat. All they've got to do is to stop the string from falling off the ends when you use the bow. So knife safety to one side. We're going to take one half of our riser and pop it down and we're going to get our hot glue gun and just get some glue on that first couple of centimeters or if you're old like me about an inch and then pop our limb onto there Try and get it as straight as you can. All right, so now we've got one lolly stick stuck to another lolly stick. Make sure you're gluing your limbs with the notches at the top. Don't glue your notches down here. We're going to do exactly the same on the other hand here, just to roughly. centimeters an inch whatever units you prefer down there and glue that one into place too so we've got even it up so now we've got our limbs connected to half our riser and uh, don't annoy your parents by getting the glue all over the all over their favourite table. And then next, we've got our, the other half of our riser. Really simple. We're going to get proper glue there. Proper glue on the other end. One match up with there, one match up with there. We'll glue that into place and then make sure all of that is all nice and tight and then leave that to dry and one thing you can do when you're waiting for that to dry is to give it a nice little bit of aesthetic and in, in the center just use a bit of gaffer tape for make the handle nice and uh, wrap that around the middle. This will give your riser a little bit of strength as well, but generally that's all we need. All right. So it's the ends. <coughs> as with the real life bows, it's not the riser that bends. It's the limbs at the end. So you can see here, we've got a solid section in the middle, which is our riser, and then the two limbs at the end. So, like we talked about at the start, I'm going to make a bowline at the top. It gives us one notch. Now you might think, and this is a bit of a, a little bit of a uh, thing. You might think that if I pull that down there, of course it's going to come out of the notch and come down the thing. But that's not what we're looking for. 
we're looking for something that is going to stop the string from pinging out when we stretch it that way like a bow so just because it doesn't uh, doesn't hold it hugely well because of the sloping notches that way the reason why the sloping notch is there is so that we can get the string on and it's the flat bits that are going to be important because that's the direction it's actually going to be bent in so I'm going to come down the bottom wrap our string around cut a bit of this off bend our bow into a bow shape so that we know what we're playing with nice bit of tight bit on there comes back on itself so this is where our archer's knot comes in and all we're doing is twisting it round twisting it round So at the moment, if you look, we've got it coming up on one side because that's the side that it came round on. So if we can adjust that over and then pull our arches not tight at that side, you can see that it centers the string in. And there we go. So instead of the string being coming up the here and then going off to that notch where it's, uh, where it's going, you can see where it's being pulled by the by the archer's knot over so it's back into the center of the yeah uh, the thing again so that's the bottom of our bow um, and then we can sort of even up the the bends in the top and lower limbs and that is our first bow cut a little bit of that off and uh, we'll just try that so one cocktail stick or kebab skewer Aim it at a target over there, and missed the target. But there we go. That's bow number one. So bow number two is going to be pretty much the same as this in the fact that we've got some bendy bits and then a riser in the middle. Um, so, so bendy limbs and a rise in the middle. What's going to be different is the way that we're going to be attaching limbs and what those limbs are going to be made of. This will actually make a, a taller bow and uh, one with a little bit more you know, length this way to it. So those lolly sticks that, that decided they weren't going to play ball um, to get the notches cut in the last one, uh, we'll just keep those because they will be useful for this bow. Uh, to make the riser from so um, we don't need any glue for this this is just tape and kebab sticks so we need 10 bamboo kebab sticks so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine and I'm just going to put one aside to use as an arrow <coughs> when we get to the end of this one. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab five, that's one, two, three, four, five of these. Get them all so that their pointy ends are at one end. Get them all even. Get a bit tight. Now, for this bit we're actually going to put enough tape to go around more but we're going to put the tape width ways so there's the tear of the tape and these are the the width of the tape that way so just to all will become clear in a in a bit so we're going to put all of those on <coughs> on the tape all together with the points right on the end of the tape up with that in the middle and then just go over the top make sure all of that's nice and secure once we've done that 
we're going to do a little bit of tape around the top but we're going to come down about a centimeter from the top so that we're going to come down to about there right so not right at the end because instead of having to cut notches like we did with the lolly sticks we're actually going to use the gaps in between the um, in between the bamboo for our notches All right so over the top around there that's all nice that's <coughs> it's one limb what I'm going to do is just put another another bit of tape in the middle just so that uh, everything is all nice and nice and together okay and that that's one limb I'm going to do exactly the same again to create our second limb Now we've got two limbs and our riser. One half of our riser. More tape. So pop that onto there, just so it comes up level with the with the riser. Get one of our limbs, and with the end that we taped up, these are the sharp end remember where we put the tape over the, or all of the spiky bits at the bottom I'm just going to pop that on there so that <coughs> so the spiky bits come down just just under the line of that but they're about middle of the uh, of the lolly stick so middle of the lolly stick and just so that when we fold the tape over it's going to overlap with that that bottom bit there okay so make sure all of that it's wrapped around so it's all nice and tight and holding all of that together that holds that on and then we're going to do exactly the same with the other side of our riser so another bit of tape then with the top spiky bits just come underneath pull all that around so it's all nice and tight try and keep it all set centered and that's that's our second bit and then just exactly the same as we did the previous bow where we had our lower riser and then sandwiched our limbs in between the two halves of the riser we're going to do exactly the same as that again so here's the other half of our riser that goes on top there so that they are in line remember that that bit of tape should be about equal to the top of there and then tape around the whole thing just keep them even as we're going down yeah. 
all the way around. <coughs> now exactly the same on the other end. One thing you might want to do, like we did, we put a bit of tape in the middle here, but this this tape doesn't do anything in this bow other than just give us a nice little center point that looks a bit like a bow handle. Um, in this one, because the, the elastic energy that we can store in these uh, bamboo skewers is going to be a lot more. There's a lot more leverage on there, on the central riser. Uh, adding tape here, so if we wrap the whole thing in tape and rise it, it will give it, it, it will increase its strength because gaffer tape is quite strong stuff. I've seen people do some amazing things with it. So if we just wrap a bit around the middle there, put it a bit tight, then that will mean it will just add that little bit more strength to our center riser. Okay, so that's basically our bow. And the next thing to do is just add a string. So once again, so where we've got these individual skewers, and this is going to be the same for the crossbow as well. What we can do here is instead of actually cutting notches and and tying uh, funny bow uh, bow knots and things like that, is we can actually just slot them in there and then wrap the string around a few times and then and then slot them in the other side so that that's all we really need for the top of our bow because what's going to happen is when the bow the bow string has got some weight against it it's just going to tighten all of that up so it's not going to slip or anything like that it's just not going to come loose all right um, so it's exactly the same as we did before in terms of bending the bow out and this time we can slot it in the bottom. Once we slot it in the bottom it should, yeah there we go, it, it's enough to hold it. It's not enough if you pull the string back now it will slip in the, uh, through the grooves but you know it's, uh, it's good enough to hold it while we're actually working out what we're doing here and, it, and in exactly the same way as we did for the top so it makes these bamboo kebabs, these kebab skewers, really nice for making uh, toy bows out of. They really don't, um, they make things like this uh, a lot easier. So go around a few times, slot it back. Oop. Slot it back through one of those. Ah, there we go. Don't want to play ball for a few times. And, uh, and there we have it. And um, you could, and this, is, this comes sort of vaguely central anyway because of the, we've got five kebab skewers and I've gone in onto the side of, of one of them. Um, now I could go around and do an archer's knot in the middle here that'll secure everything off and also allow us to pull it over, but it's only got to come over a little bit, so. Um, you know, toy bows aren't, uh, we're not building anything competition accurate or anything, so. I can easily just turn it off there. But <clears throat> one thing, because we're not actually tying things off and there's no solid loops there, just for safety, take a little bit of tape, pop it round the top of the bow on the top of the string. And at the other end, and then we absolutely know that our string isn't going to slip and and do anything that we don't want it to do. And there we go. That's bow number two, and uh, handy kebab skewer that left aside earlier onto the string, and uh, do a little practice shot.
so that's the uh, that went a lot further than I thought okay so there we go that's our two bows both of these are based on a longbow design where we have a central handle to which we have bendy limbs that when we pull back the string those bendy limbs are storing elastic energy in them and when we let go of the string that elastic energy as those limbs come back into shape transfer that energy to an arrow as kinetic energy and therefore the arrow goes off and heads towards the target somewhere so there are two long bows last last one we're going to do we're going to make a crossbow we're going to actually make this and uh, i've been playing with this so much that it's in a bit of a sorry state now so needs a bit of replacing but that's that's exactly what we're going to build now so to make the crossbow we need six skewers one two three four five six and the first thing we need to do get them all even get the bottoms all even and then with a craft knife or scissors or a parent then take all of the tips off scissors <laughs> All right. so now we've got six one sharp at sharp pieces of uh, of bamboo. The first one, set two of those aside and uh, with the, these other four you're going to tape them together in a block of four like that. So we need them taped <coughs> at uh, both ends. So we're going to tape them around the top. And then we're going to tape around the bottom. And I'm going to tape them in the middle in a minute at the moment because we need to do the limbs for our crossbow. Crossbows work in a similar way to normal bows and the fact that they have string that pulls back limbs and the limbs store elastic energy and they transfer that over to what's called in crossbow terms a bolt or a quarrel <clears throat> and uh, do exactly the same thing but because of the design of crossbows they can actually be more compact and uh, can be a little bit more powerful than longbows so just an example of that some of the longbows from the Mary Rose are around about 150 pounds or more um, and they were really kind of the upper end of medieval war bows but medieval crossbows could be two thousand pounds huge the next thing we're going to do is make our limbs now we're going to come, come in about a centimeter from the end of each but we're going to tape there and there to make our crossbow limb So, come in about a centimetre. Tape that up. OK. 
Come in about a centimetre. And then tape that up. There we go. So now we've got the two parts of our crossbow. Cruising the name, we need to make a cross. So we're going to open up the middle. This is why we didn't put any tape in the middle of our four, group of four here. Open up those and insert in our cross limb. Now keeping that roughly central and move that all the way up. It will get tighter and tighter the further up you go. And go up as far as we can in that way. Again, making sure that that's roughly, roughly equal. And then once we got there, get another bit of tape. And tape just behind our crossbow there. And then pinch that down tight. So it's just so that it's uh, holding all of that into place. All right, that's there. And to make that cross, doubly so, I'm gonna cut some strips off. It feels like it's raining, so. I'll just show you this and then we'll pause for a bit until we can come out. It's not raining so much, but I'll just tie these on. It's uh, exactly the same way if you've ever done a square lashing. <clears throat> when you're going... Square lashing? Diagonal lashing, I mean. When you're going around in the corners of the, the, of the bars in order to get them all nice and tightly together. Right, and we'll just do one more, and then that will be a pause for rain. Push it all nice and neat in, and so you'll end up with something like that. And now we're out here and it's not raining. Just to uh, recap on what, we, what we've done so far. We've got four bamboo skewers, tied them at both ends, two bamboo skewers, take them just about a centimetre down on each side, slid that section up into, into here, in, in between the two there, take that at the back, and then tape that going crossways and crossways so that that's fairly fairly solidly in there forming that cross and that's as far as we've got with our with our crossbow now what you might need to want to do at this point is because we want this this cross section just to be solid as possible so <coughs> instead of all this loose bit here we can add as much tape as we like pinching all that together just to keep everything just tight. And just adding a bit more tape in. And you can go down as far as you like with that. So you can tape the whole handle up if you wish. Let's just do, uh, in fact, I'm gonna put a little bit more tape on there. Just in the middle, just to stop everything from slipping over each other. Okay, by the way, just the tape. I'm just using um, some brown gaffer tape for all of this. Um, you can use whatever color gaffer tape you like, or you could use normal tape or electrical tape. Gaffer tape's a little bit stronger, um, so it just tends to be best for the job possibly a little bit overkill but you know it's always a good thing okay the next thing we're going to be doing is to put our bow string on so there's two two steps left to this this bow one is the string and one is 
is this little bit of card here that's just going to act as an arrow guide. But we'll put the string on first. <coughs> so all we need to do for the string here is to slot it between where we've got our centimetre end of the cross. Slot it in there. And just as we've done for other bows, give it a few winds to secure it. And then slot it back in. And this time, where for the other bows, when we put our bowstring on, we pulled the bow into a bow shape. Can we get a limb twist on there? But, uh, for this one, we're not going to do that. We're just going to come straight across and make sure that it is a little bit, a little bit tight along along the beam. So we're not. We're not pulling it back like this, we're just going to be pulling it so it's straight along there. So again, slot it in, a few turns on there, and then slot it in again. And then just trim that off. Now what you might want to do, I'll just add a couple of bits on here, is uh, just add some little bits of tape, just to secure the uh, the bowstring on the end make sure it doesn't slip not needed but it's uh, just as a sort of extra precaution just to make sure everything is going to be stable okay so now we've got our basic bow could actually fire it like this so what happens is you pull the bowstring back like that you can see it, it arcs and then you let go and it, uh, it all bends back into shape but um, to add an extra bit of, of ease to the firing we're just going to make a channel for our arrows to go down so what we're going to do is to roll this up you can roll this around a pencil if you like to give it a bit of more of a shape to it but I'm just going to draw it by hand Roll that into a tube. The other good thing about uh, about duct tape is it's just easy to play around with. You don't have to cut it or anything like that. It just tears. Um, so put that into a tube, and then that tube. What we're going to do is we're going to pull the string back, and then tape it here All right so it's just just behind just behind the limbs of the bow behind the string so we pull the string back so it's on the other side of it the string back and then tape it just behind the cross there right can be a little bit fiddly to uh, to get it right on but it's about there need that back, back bit And that is, that is our crossbow. And again, you can get one of our uh, famous kebabisic arrows, or in a crossbow bolt state, they're called bolts or quarrels, and see how it goes. There we go. So that is the crossbow. So that goes with our little lolly stick longbow and our kebab stick and lolly stick longbow. So there you go. So our next next subject, we've just been using uh, cocktail sticks for uh, for arrows so far. I'm just going to uh, briefly go into a little bit about arrows and how they are in the real world compared to how they are in uh, 
the world of toy bows. So <coughs> this is a real arrow um, and you can see that parts of the real arrow we have a point, in this case these are field points, they're quite they're not the lightest field points in the world, um, but, but I like a bit of weight to the end of the bow. And um, we'll talk about weighting the end of, of uh, arrows and why that's important in a second. Shaft, uh, a knock, this fits onto the bowstring, and fletchings that help the arrow to stabilize in flight, and then some bits of. Uh, tardiness so well the idea is so I can actually find my arrows easier in the uh, in the undergrowth but in practice they still like to disguise themselves but that's real world arrows in terms of our arrows the point kebab sticks already come with a point the shaft and then in terms of, of uh, fletchings the arrows don't go fast enough and don't fly far enough to warrant putting flexions on there. But there's nothing, nothing to say that if you want to make your arrows pretty, if you use some tissue paper or uh, something light, some light material to just put some flexions on the end, you may find that adding flexions to small light toy arrows makes them look good, but actually shoot worse. So it's up to you whether you're going to do that. We're not. And as far as a knocking point goes, um, you can see you can see when we're using the longbow that you've got to get the string onto the end of the of the kebab there. Now that works, but it's it's quite a, a thin cross section of, of kebab stick that you've got to get onto the string. So easiest thing to do is get the kebab stick and squash it. So what you've got now is you've flattened it down so that it is wider and there you go it's wider than the string. You've got about one and a half times the width of the string now on the end of the kebab thing rather than just over slightly over the string width on the old one. So you don't actually need to put a groove into these and in fact if you start putting grooves into these it'll just you know make the thing splinter or whatever what you really need is something broad just to broaden out the end of the arrow so that you've got a flatter area to uh, to go and uh, put the arrow the to string fit the string onto and the next thing is length of arrow so length of arrow is important in terms of if you have too much arrow then you're going to uh, make the arrow too heavy for the bow and if you have too little arrow then the arrow is going to fall off the string so if, I, if my arrow was was this size and I pull the arrow back it, it, that's that's no good at all <clears throat> the arrow being this size with this bow is probably I don't know it might be about right about right it could it could be a little bit shorter maybe an inch shorter off the end but uh, that's that's not too bad for this bow uh, for this bow however a full length kebab stick if I pull the thing back you see that there's a good sort of two inches or so four centimeters maybe that uh, those that work in metric that we could take off the end of there so that's that's too long for this bow and for this one the kebab stick might actually be a little bit too short yeah so I've not even pulled that back as far as I'll go. It'll actually go back further than that. So the kebab stick is a little bit too short. So if you're using our kebab stick longbow and you're using kebab sticks to do it, make sure that you're not pulling it back so far that the arrow comes back. You only can pull it back as far as that. If you want to pull it back further, you've got to find something longer to, uh, to make your arrows out of. And there are plenty of things that you can, uh, you can use to make longer arrows out of. We've got uh, some dowels that are slightly longer there. Uh, these dowels that I've got here are about the same width as a pencil. You could use uh, pencils 
in these and if you make your your arrow guide here about the same width as a pencil your crossbow will be able to fire pencils too if I go back on this then yeah that's about the right size for that and if you want it to stick in a target you could sharpen the end up um, if you want it to be safer somewhere in my box here random uh, random odds and sods have these pencil top rubbers so if you're using pencils for ammunition pencils can be really quite short, sharp uh, and you will damage the pencil if you use it to, to stick in and to make it safe you can just pop one of these over the point in the pencil or with these type of arrows they can just pop on on the end that makes a nice safe point to the arrow um, <clears throat> but if you wanted to point on it to use this target then you can just run it through a pencil sharpener and that'll be fine now the other thing like I was talking about with real arrows <coughs> is uh, the points add weight so what you're actually looking for in an arrow is for it to balance in real life this is is it to balance somewhere further down the arrow than center so not actually bang on the center what this does is when the arrow is flying through the air it, <coughs> these are just meant to stabilize it but this gives it the momentum so you want the weight at the front and the arrow in the fletchings to stabilize it so if you imagine if you're making a paper airplane it's one of the first things you do to a paper airplane to stabilize it is to start putting paper clips or more folds or whatever onto the front of the airplane that makes the nose heavier so the airplane flies better and it's the same it's the same kind of principle with arrows so you want some way to the end not too much because if you have too much you shoot the arrow and it will do that if you have just enough then it will improve the way the arrow flies and in case of the bows that we're using here one of the easiest ways to do it is to just get a little bit of tape just just behind the point is to just roll some tape on and all that does it just makes the arrow a little bit front heavy so that when it balances it's balancing further to the front than the back and that just gives that little bit more stability to the arrow um, so that's uh, toy arrows final thing when we're making not when we're making it but when we're actually using them one of the things that you do with toy bows you definitely do not point them in the direction of other people or pets or other animals or anything like this but you can still make a nice game out of them so <coughs> back of the documents we've actually printed off or some we've included some targets that you can print off and use So you can make yourself a bit of a target out of the out of the bows and play around with your friends and your family to see who can get scores. And what we've got here, this is just a, an old Amazon delivery box. I've taped a field target together with it. So the scoring on a field target goes one, two, three, four, five, and then the X in the centre is six. So if I go and use the Lollipop long, longbow first. See how I can do with this. It didn't stick in, but I scored a, um, a three with that. Let's see where the mark is. So this using the now remember with this one, with the kebab stick one, I can't shoot all the way. You can pull the arrow back or as far as I need, as far as the bow will let it. Just have to pull it back as far as the arrow will let me this is that did stick in but not a high score so that scored a three there there's a four with the other one and then with our crossbow so we do the crossbow the uh, target doesn't fall down on us crossbow another three so if you give each other three or four arrows each 
um, you can make have have bow different bows against each other um, just have fun but remember set your targets up somewhere safe bearing in mind you might miss so make sure that wherever you're firing whatever's behind your target is safe a wall or something like that so if you do miss it's not going to uh, injure anyone make sure that there's nothing precious that your parents are going to uh, not be too happy about you shooting arrows in behind it as well um, and these bows you can improve them or play around with them these are the three that we have made in this session uh, if you have a look at some of the examples that I've done now the ones this is a different kind of crossbow and in this case the arrow goes through the middle and goes on your bowstring but instead of the bows that we've we've made where the elastic force is stored in the limbs we've got a rubber band across there so when I'm pulling the arrow back what happens is is that these pivot points cause these limbs to move apart and we've got an elastic band there so that it's actually in the elastic band that the elastic force is, uh, is stored so when I let go the rubber band comes back and uh, up goes the arrow so I hope you enjoyed that little introduction into bows and making toy bows there's another thing you might be interested in if you've got a 3D printer or something 3D printing takedown bows and there's compound bows and all sorts that you can do there as well little project but remember whatever kind of bow you're making real bows, toy bows, anything important thing is always to stay safe never point them at anyone never point them at any animal and just uh, have fun